Give me the meat and give it to me raw. Five minutes later. There are many ways to kill an orc. But for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, twist, gut. Come at me. All I know is that I can play. Salon Selectives presents hair so beautiful you feel like you've just stepped out of a salon. Salon Shine! Salon Selectives! Salon Glow! Salon Selectives! Introducing Salon Selectives, new from Helene Curtis. Four salon shampoos, four salon conditioners. You select the combination that will give you salon beautiful hair. Salon Style! Feel salon beautiful every day. Salon The Young and the Restless. This portion sponsored by Oil of Olay. Oi. What's up? How's it going? <clears throat> Damn, that was terrible. Welcome, everyone, to another review of The Rings of Empowerment, The Rings of girl power the rings of vandalization the rims of power brought to you by the trillion dollar corporation amazon a series that cost 60 million dollars an episode and what did we do absolutely nothing except destroy more lore Destroy Galadriel some more. Cuck Alindil. I hate this show. I want it to be over. I want this to be done. Thank God there's only one more episode where we find out that Halbrand is Sauron. Hey, we saw Feminem or Chicka Chicka Slim Lady, and we still don't know who the hell they are. They're an all female order of probably warrior nuns, just like we had basically two of in Star Trek Discovery, another show destroyed by bad reboot disciples. I wouldn't be surprised at all if JD Payne and Patrick McKay dusted up some scripts for Star Trek Discovery back in the day, because it sure feels like Star Trek Discovery all over again. Except worse, because it's with it's with Tolkien. And this was their holy grail, the 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 woke's holy grail. They wanted to get their little grimy claws into this, and they did. The good news is it won't harm any of the books, any of the lore. Uh, the bad news is there might be a couple of people out there, and this is how they're introduced to Lord of the Rings, which is just effing sad everything about this is pathetic i i there's a scene where i lost my shit i woke up my kid <laughs> my wife got mad at me <laughs> i just started throwing stuff Ooh, it's been a while so i got that mad if there was an andrew garfield one six scale head anywhere near me both monitors would be broken right now Let's not bury the lead. Kelleborn's dead. It sucks to be right. As was right. I was right. The person who gave us the information was completely right. That person hasn't been wrong about a single thing. Kelleborn is not only dead, she mocked him for his armor not fitting. The guy who actually fought in wars when Galadriel did not. Uh, 
so yes, Kelleborn is a missing persons case. He's dead. They'll mystery box some shit and bring him back in some lame way. He'll be like a prisoner somewhere, or I don't know. Uh, where's Kelebrian? I I don't know. Um, I heard from a couple of people, not from the show, that we're a thousand years, a thousand years into the second age, which it just makes no sense at all with any of the any of this. So we're 500 years before they start forging the rings of power, which takes 50 some odd years. Uh, Galadriel's definitely with Celeborn at this time. She definitely did not meet Queen Regent Muriel. Oh, let's just get through it. Thankfully, only a eh, two and a half pages of notes because it's a lot of Walking, are they dead? Are they not? Are we going to dig for Mithril? Are we not? Maybe, maybe King Duran will let us. No, he won't, but we'll dig anyway. We'll kick out Elrond. He'll look sad and femi like he always does. And Elendil will just be uh, a moron. Played by a capable actor. There's a couple of capable actors in here who are just being wasted on this shite. The, 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 the guy playing... Durin the third is all right. And the guy playing um, Alindiel is all right. Disa wasn't the worst thing in this, not the best thing. And there's a really cringe scene with her at the end. So yeah, they bring, they bring home the cringe with everybody's favorite character, Disa. All right. She wasn't bad in the first part brings home the cringe at the end. So this big battle with like no stakes, at all. And you're like, what are you talking about? It's the origin of Mordor. <laughs> like, there's no stakes in this. It was 30 villagers versus some uh, multiplying orcs that could just magically spawn and 300 Numenorians reduced to about 100, maybe. And a really sad horse. And a really sad horse. And oh, there's a big mystery. Is a Sildor dead? Gee, I wonder if a Sildor is dead. This is why prequels suck. And they should stop. Even, even if I have to sacrifice House of the Dragon, don't care. We need to end all prequels. They need to just be forgotten. <sighs> I know Disa is super power hungry. She's hungry. <laughs> hey, I'm here all week for one more. And then I can start sleeping on Thursday nights. But I do enjoy this cathartic experience with all of you out there. So welcome, chat, you sexy, beautiful chat. We got a couple of super chats. And then I'm going to start breaking down this episode. Again, I don't think it's going to take long. Uh, don't know if we're going to, if as is, he tried to call me earlier and I missed it. What time did he try to call me? Oh, a few hours ago. Sorry, bud. Uh, I don't know if he's out there. He can come on. But um, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to go and try not to wake up my family. Uh, but we'll get to these first. Uh, God bless you for defending Tolkien's lore and legacy and the Lord of the Rings fandom. Hail Nerotic and Friday Night Tights. That's Earl Starbuck for $5. Thank you very much. And uh, Paglicio, 1976 for $10. Plot armor, as light as a feather. And as hard as a dragon, as dragon scales and more fire retardant, re, uh, emphasis on the retard, uh, than a whole shitload of asbestos. Yeah. Uh, Guy Ladriel survives. We we had that week of headcanon that she just evaporated in the pyroclastic flow, which has temperatures varying in degrees of like 1300 to 1500, 1800 degrees. Uh, everybody should be dead. But apparently the pyroclastic flow just stopped and so did all the ash and there's just this lush place that they end up at. <laughs> oh, oh, the dumb doesn't end there though. It really doesn't. She survived somehow. Uh, the sea is always right and full of terrors. Uh, Matt L for five Australian dollars. Yeah, 
they're trying to repurpose so much Lord of the Rings dialogue and try to sneak in like Game of Thrones stuff too. It's so it's so bad. It's so bad. So that it makes sense that that article came out yesterday. I have a video coming out tomorrow morning uh, going over that article, or we'd go over it tonight, but we don't need to because you'll see that video tomorrow morning where they call you patently evil. You're patently evil if you if you criticize this show. But there's also a wonderful paragraph in that article that says an Amazon insider admits that they're shitting their pants because they're getting their asses handed to them by House of the Dragon. Good. Good. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to share the screen. Oh, that's not going to work. Hang on. Let's stop. That was, <laughs> that was underwhelming. That was limp. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, let's try this. There we go. That works and it stays. All right. So we've got Cheeto Galadriel. She's just fine. Not even a flesh wound, not even a scratch. She's covered in Cheetos. She's covered in Cheetos. She's looking around. Uh, I don't know if I could find the fire horse. I wanted to. Um, tweet at Mahler that there is a fire horse, like a horse that was on fire, obviously. Uh, but she just gets up and she starts uh, yelling for Alin Dill and Miriel. And it's, it looks like uh, Mordor 911 for a little while. They're, uh, the, the Numenorians are rescuing people from the fire. Some people are, are pretty jacked up. My favorite part was when uh, I'm forgetting his name and I don't care. Um, a Sildur's friend is trapped under basically a house and Alindil the tall, one of the greatest Numenorean warriors can't lift it up. So he asks for queen regent Muriel for help. And then she, then they lift it up really easy. I fuck this show. Fuck this show. Oh shit. I'm not supposed to have sound. Sorry. Whoops. Whoopsie doopsie. We'll see if we can get to that. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, their, their white friend dies basically. Their white friend dies. Dead meat. You knew that kid was dead meat. He's like, I've had enough fighting. For a lifetime. I'm going to stay back and help the villagers. That boy's dead. He's dead. Plus he was white. So of course they were going to kill him. Uh, then the house collapse on uh, a Sildur and Muriel go into a house to save some people. And she gets some ash in her eye and it collapses on him. So a mu he must be totally dead. The guy who cuts the ring from the hand of Sauron. Like you, like really? That's who you picked, showrunners. This is your big mystery. Oh, and of course, we don't find out what happens this episode, but, but I, I assure you, he'll be fine. I assure you, he'll be fine. So yeah, then, uh, like I said, the uh, we get some ash in Muriel's eyes, and as As spoke about a long time ago. Muriel's blind. She's blinded, but she doesn't want her people to know. So what she's going to do is put a blindfold on <laughs> next episode. So people won't know she's, she's blind. <laughs> oh, and then damn Harfoots are back. I know, but don't worry. 
it's not long. Uh, it appears that the some remnants of the volcano have gotten in the way of their migration, and it spoiled all their trees. So not Gandalf is just going to, he's going to like totally heal them, right? So he does. That's a, Well, that's a hell of a shot right there. Um, so he starts healing the tree. If I can go, man, no, see, God dang it, this thing. Nasty Harfoots is very uh, inclusive. So, um, they're looking at not Gandalf heal the tree and it doesn't work. And a branch breaks off and almost hits, uh, Nori's little sister who we don't know the name of. We don't know. There's never been a conversation. I'm betting a lot of people didn't even know Nori had a little sister. <laughs> she does. Uh, the apples are rotten. More stage Irish. They ruined my lucky charms. And they're like, uh, there's hobo baggins. And they're like, God dang, we're, we're going to comfort each other. But man, you smell. So, of course, he feels bad. He can talk a little bit, but he doesn't talk this episode. He feels bad for almost hurting the girl. So they send him away. They give him the map of the stars and they send him away. That's it. He's done. Uh, but wait, there's more. They spend another hour on about 30 seconds of plot. Uh, fun fact, in 2022, money for the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy cost $451 million to make. Rings of Power's first season has already blown that. And what do they have to show for it? Uh, Coffee Sama for $4.99. Uh, this... This, this is why they released that article and another fluff piece for Jennifer Salky to try to save her job because this is the biggest embarrassment, the biggest disaster in television history. Game of Thrones had a bad, well, couple, three seasons towards the end, but it was popular at first. This thing, they put an insane amount of money up front committing to five seasons. And it's a joke. They're being laughed at. They're being mocked behind the scenes. They're being mocked by fandoms. And they're trying to say it's on par with House of the Dragon. It's not. Proud of Adar and the Orcs. They got their real estate. They did. You know, quite frankly, I'm rooting for them. So. All right. Say, hey, guess what? He just got the meat and he got it raw. So Elrond is now asking King Durin if they can wait for it because we've waited seven episodes for this so they can dig for Mithril. So it took us like five episodes to figure out that we needed Mithril. Now we're at the seventh episode so we can ask to dig for Mithril. Why do we need Mithril? Well, Mithril will get rid of the leaf cancer in the tree. That's supposed to be the darkness. Now, how is it going to do that? Are they going to melt it and, and like, I don't know. What are they going to like wear it on their clothes? How is, how is it going to protect them from the darkness? Well, we find out like what it does. It's a proximity thing. We'll just say it wards it off. It wards off the darkness. So then why isn't it doing it already? Why does it need to be dug out of the ground? It's still around. So does it need to be really close? I don't know. This is what happens when you fuck with the lore that was meticulously put together. That is why there is no excuse. You're not adapting just a book. Lord of the Rings, The Silmarillion, The Hobbit aren't just a story, just a book. This is a man who spent his life thinking about Gina, uh, Freaking genealogy is it genealogy? I think it was called geography, coptography. I don't know if I got that one right. I was kicked out of three high schools. He thought about the phases of the moon, the tides, geography. 
if I haven't said that already. He thought about it all. He thought about it all for many, many years. And they threw it all away so they can give me thrill and origin and have it be like a super metal that, I don't know, can make them suits of armor that they can fucking fly around. I have no idea what they're going to do. And I will ask you this, Tolkien scholars, Tolkien professors, how's that integrity holding up? Hmm? Still feeling good about that self? How does that gift bag keep you warm at night? How does that help your integrity? That little trip out to London to see 20 minutes of footage. So, yeah, this whole thing with, you know, everybody likes the dwarves. It seems like that's the thing they care about the most. And uh, King Durin the third looks great. But it's just basic bitch soap opera dialogue. And we're moving at a snail's pace to just find out if we can dig some effing mithril, which we could have done four episodes ago. But it's all to slowly get to the mystery. What's down? In cause, oh, by the way, we were supposed to see Kaza Doom in its prime. I've seen like a room and a hall, maybe two rooms, nothing else. Where did the money go? Somebody pocketed a lot of money. I think his name is Jeff Bezos. Um, so Durin says no. Durin won't dig. Uh, Elrond pleads, gets on his knees. He still says no because basically it's the will of the gods. It's a long, drawn-out scene. Uh, and Durin the fourth gets mad. He cries again. There, there's Elrond on his knees. Uh, begging for the life of his people. And he said, I got to talk to my son. Then he says, fuck no, I trust no elves. Why? Why? I mean, if there's a beef, why? Why is there a beef? Why Why is this happening? Why does he not want them digging for Mithril? Does King Durin III know that there is a Balrog uh, uh, there? And why isn't he telling his son who's his heir? Why wouldn't he tell him that? Oh, because the script won't allow it until the very end. So he can say, I told you not to dig because there was a Balrog. The Balrog who was supposed to be hibernating right now and doesn't come up for a long, long time. Oh, but by the way, spoilers, the Balrog's all awake. He's totally awake down there. Or I'm sorry, this is Rings of Power. She, she is awake right now. One moment, just checking the chat. Be with you in just a moment. Going to try to get this through this as much as I can. So he says, no. And Dee says, oh, he's stupid. Uh, but then she calms down and goes, you know, it's the will of the king. That's it. Oh, well. Won't be able to dig the mithril. It's sad. He tells Elrond. They're all sad. He's all, I guess this is goodbye then. Hands him back to Mithril. Then he tosses it across the table right next to the leaf. And it shows, uh, by the way, they just had the cancer leaf that Gilgalad had. He gave it to Elrond. Elrond left it on the table. Then just magically, uh, Durin the fourth tosses the mithril across the table and it just happens to land next to the cancer leaf and then it cures the cancer leaf and they go Elrond uh so you think like hey we're gonna get they were talking about like doing a serious dig a serious dig in in Kaza Doom because we were expected to see Kaza Doom in its height so we're gonna see a bunch of dwarves like mining right no again spoilers it's just 
Durin and Elrond digging by themselves. Back to Cheeto land. And they just sit there and basically whine for a little while. Uh, what we got here is, I need my highlighter pen. Sorry. I've already gone that, that, that. Oh, hmm. you know what? I got to get the, the screen with the closed captions up. That's going to just have to be better. Give me just a mo. I think that'll work better. So sorry I was late today um, because internet went down for a little while, but it, in the weirdest way, it was just, it was localized and Google and YouTube wasn't working. Oh, for, this is so terrible. There we go. Where was I? There's Sad Alindil. Okay. We are now sharing the screen again. Resize it, ladies. All right, so there's Mordor. But they didn't they haven't called it Mordor yet. Wait, the ending of this episode is so fucking lame. <laughs> it's I laughed. So orcs are growling and grunting. The five orcs that were left multiplied again. Remember, Adar got away. So they're trying to make this their home. These lands are dead. Get down. Keep moving. That's it. Uh, but they also, in this conversation, there is a conversation where they're walking. And Theo asks, Warrior Galadriel, Scourge of the Orcs, Warrior of the Wastelands, Commander of the Northern Armies, how many Orcs she slayed. And she says, many, many. And he goes, good. And then she goes, it is not good to be happy about, you know, killing something. Although she's fucking happy about it. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, we again. Through this scene, we're going to go forward a little bit. And these are the surviving Southerners and Numenorians. Uh, Alindil doesn't know where his son is. There's his son's horse, Beric. Dondarian. And he finds out that his son didn't come back. And he's very sad. And he's pissed. Now he's mad at Guy Ladriel. He's all, I should have never pulled that elf from the sea. So Elendil the Faithful starts blackpilling a little bit. And yeah, this is the scene with Theo walking with Guy Ladriel. And we get some more like weak ass exposition. The Numenorians set up their camp upon the ridgeline. So thankfully there's a camp outside of the blast radius. Completely outside, by the way. It's beautiful. Uh, right now it's, a, you know, it looks like LA or it looks like Southern California during a fire. Quite frankly, I've seen it look like that before. Um, Theo thinks Bronwyn is dead. We should be so lucky, but she's not. Uh, we also don't get it. Uh, Don Lemonless is missing, but nobody's missing him at all for some reason. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Let's see if I can. 
Let's see if I can get this without getting in trouble. There you go. How many orcs have you killed? How many orcs have you killed? Many. Of that, every soldier must be mindful. And then he asks, if I a soldier? And then she hands him her sword. Basically knighting him. Basically, I mean, she doesn't tap his shoulders, but she basically knights him. Uh, perhaps we could make one of you yet. <laughs> I mean, God. <laughs> this is intersectional feminist cringe. Look at it. She had a pyroclastic flow hit her in her stupid face. And she's fine. Her hair, not a singed lock of hair. But they went into every last detail with this show. And listen, I know, I know they only had $60 million an episode. Their hands were tied. Their hands were tied. Oh my, and this is all this episode is, guys. Like, it is just walking around a little exposition. Is this person alive? I wonder. Ooh, uh, everybody's alive. He gets this, another sword. Um, They slowly go back. They find out Muriel is indeed blind. And she just goes, continue. I don't want anybody to know. And then she gives no reason. Like, why? Your queen got blinded. She could still rule. She's still your ruler. Was she afraid she's going to get usurped? The queen in her really, really bad armor go on. And yeah, it's a freaking Harfoots again. It's the Harfoots again. Oh my God. The last thing I want is bonus content of this show. There's Sadic Burroughs. Sadic Burroughs. Keep your head down and your eye on that line of cliffs. So he's sending, um, not Gandalf on his way. Sending Gand not Gandalf on his way after he tried to heal the tree and almost hurt a Harfoot. Uh, you know, and I, like, I don't know. I don't, again, I don't know if Az is out there or uh, I have to get with that person. I, I don't, the warrior nuns, feminine, chicka chicka slim lady. I have a bad feeling they're Maiar. I really do. I just got a bad feeling we're getting some female wizards. I could be wrong. It's, I have no evidence of that other than their ability to use magic and they don't have pointy ears. We'll get to that. Uh, speaking of Myar, not Gandalf, get sent away. Apparently there's a settlement of men over some ridge. Who gives a shit? Um, and they, oh, look, wait. There's a little flower growing on the tree. See, it totally worked, but they're still sending them away because they're stupid Harfoots. We've, we've established that. They're assholes and they're stupid. So um, he's in a bathrobe, by the way. Look at him. He's in a damn bathrobe. The Gandalf abides. The Gandalf abides. You know what he needs? Pipe weed. That's what he needs. So he looks sad, and then he goes away, and she gives him an apple. And, like, you're waiting for something to happen, and he just hands, she just hands him a fucking apple. And it's, a, it's like, they, they edit like three times to, so she could hand him an apple. Like, this is some meaningful scene. So now, uh, Nori Brandyfoot's going, you're right. I cannot subvert Harfoot 
uh, patriarchy, Harfoot systems. I'm just a Harfoot. I'm going to resign myself to being just a girl Harfoot in an oppressive, male-dominated, patriarchal Harfoot society. Well, always me. Uh, did I say fuck this show? Fuck this show. So the moon passes and we get chicka 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 slim lady F uh feminem. Uh they're out getting snails or some shit. Oh wait. Oh wait, oh, I'm sorry. No, there here we are back. We are not with the feminem. We are with the worst, the second, yeah, the worst scene in here where we find out Celeborn is dead. So there's the moon. And there's, can you see that? Uh, you probably can't. It's shot as dark as uh, as Game of Thrones was. Plus my monitor kind of sucks for that. So Theo and Guy Ladriel are still waiting. Uh, they're trying to hide out from orcs. And they start talking and he goes, uh, Theo asks, have you lost anyone? Uh, have you lost anyone? Wait. I'm going to risk it. So he says, have you lost anyone? Kin, I mean. So she mentions her brother. She says his name, Finrod. And then we get the big answer. She, she says, I lost my husband. So... On this mission of vengeance, Celeborn was his name. So on this big mission of vengeance that's lasted hundreds of years, thousands of years, I have no idea. She keeps bringing up her brother and she brings up her husband in the seventh episode. The seventh episode. The seventh motherfucking episode of a billion dollar TV show. Sixty million dollars an episode. You bring up Celeborn in the seventh episode. Which really feels like a reshoot that was tacked on. Doesn't it? It took him 18 months to film this 18 months to film this. That's how long it takes to film a couple of feature films. That's insane. And then it looks like dog shit. I know the showrunners were out there saying even the harshest critics were saying it looks beautiful. Uh, no, a couple of static shots might look nice as a desktop. That does not make a $60 million an episode show, bruh. Celeborn was his name. Nicholas Cage is Gal Galadriel. Okay. It'd be better than this. She's terrible. Oh, it gets worse. They met dancing. The war seems so very far away. But when he went, I chided him. His armor didn't fit properly. They even need to degrade the dead men in this show. The dead elves. Fuck. Intersectional trash. This is intersectional trash it, something in that article that that was mentioned that um you know the fans are patently evil the big hollywood reporter article a lot of unintentional truths that i don't know if they wanted let out by the way totally confirmed again hate being right that it was jar jar abrams that got him the job they admitted it themselves and who brought the series home after some difficulties meaning Christopher Tolkien, and then he unfortunately passed away. May he rest in peace. Who brought the series home? 
Lindsay Weber from Bad Reboot, who's a co-founder of Me Too, Katie McGrath, wife of Jar Jar Abrams. Me Too cleared out a lot of spaces for a lot of Bad Reboot employees, including, well, Me Too cleared out a space for Jennifer Salky at Amazon. Isn't it weird that Me Too is just a fucking power grab? It's all it was. Yeah, you know, just walking on all of the corpses of those abused women, I mean, metaphorically, completely ignoring the children, too. Back to the show. Hollywood is a foul place. Um, yeah, F this scene. Fuck this scene. Fuck this lore. And again, I will ask Tolkien scholars... Tolkien professors. You know what? I don't need an apology. I don't want to speak for as maybe he does need an apology, but I don't think he does. The fandom is owed an apology for your shillery. I will ask you once again, how's your integrity holding up? Told you this was going to happen for months, for months. You know, I, I didn't expect anybody from Amazon to watch my videos two years ago or three years ago. Thank you for watching them, by the way. When I said, you know, I really didn't want this shit in the Lord of the Rings fandom, the stuff that we've experienced with Star Trek, with Star Wars, with Doctor Who. I didn't want it in the Lord of the Rings fandom. It was a nice, peaceful fandom. Plus, it's older than most of them, more well-read. And... Thankfully, the vast majority of you are just not having this. And there's only one episode to go. You want to hear some good news? They're going to be working on season two for a couple of years. So two and a half years till we get season two. So you'll have a respite. And this thing will be fucking dead. And the fact that they're not, the showrunners aren't fired and Lindsay Weber isn't fired right now is is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Now, maybe they're just using them to get the infrastructure going again, and then they cut them at the end of the season. It's happened before. Um, but yeah, man. The Hollywood Reporter put in a quote uh, prescribing it to they were, of course, they were trying to shit on the Peter Jackson trilogy to support this show. You know, that old trick. Uh, but they they prescribed a quote to it that said that it was raping Tolkien's text. No, this is. This is. My lady, it isn't your fault because you're awesome. I gave the power to the enemy, so that makes it my responsibility. Uh, but how am I to let it go? Like she would know. There are powers beyond dark. She's it's like repurposing Gandalf's dialogue. Fuck the show. She cannot see yet. Uh, then some orcs find them, and they sniff around for a little bit. And then they go away and it, it's like nothing is of consequence in this episode. And they admit, they admit in that article that these episodes lack the urgency of, of Tolkien, of what people are used to with Tolkien. You mean the quality, you mean the, the good as opposed to repurposed shit. Oh my God, Elrond and um, uh, Doogie Elrond and Durin the uh, Third aren't going to make out, although it seems like it. And yes, so that big mining operation for Mithril is just those two digging by themselves. Now, maybe they're doing it in secret, but it's stupid because their digging is causing tremors 
or there is tremors around where they're digging. Not really sure. So they, uh, they talk about their competition where it was obvious that Elrond let them win and Durin just figured out that Elrond let them win. But if you go back to that scene, Durin acknowledges that Elrond let him win. Unless he didn't, which was, then what was the whole point of that look? So they're not keeping track of their own lore. I know their shit show better than they do. God, that happened in Star Trek too. I'm getting so much deja vu with Star Trek Discovery on this show. Just like story be story beats, repurposing beats. We'll call them repurposing beats. So they dig a hole. They dig a hole and they find the mithril, but then they get caught by Durin the Third. So let me keep this straight. They wanted to dig, but they couldn't dig. Then they decided to dig. Then they couldn't dig. Then they couldn't dig. Then they decided to dig. But now they're back to not being able to dig. Okay? Seven episodes. That's what we get. Dig, not dig, dig, not dig. I don't give a fuck now. I hope the thing collapses in on itself, to be honest with you. Which it probably will. So Elrond gets kicked out. Uh, again, like this, this looks like a proper dwarf right there. That that looks that looks that looks fine. That looks fine. But I am complimenting a puppy that didn't shit on my carpet today. That's all I'm doing. A bad little puppy that pees and shits on my carpet every day didn't do it for one day. That's what this is. Hardwood floors. That's how you deal with that. You don't have carpets and puppies. Just don't. Um, and then we get a long drawn out scene of, I held you as a baby and I thought you're going to die, but you weren't going to die. And now I'm going to strip you of being Prince. Okay. Because you dug when I told you not to dig. So obviously he knows something that Durin the fourth doesn't, and they're not telling him because the script won't allow for it. It's forced melodrama bullshit. Ah, fucking, fucking hard foots again. There's Hobo Baggins. Oh, we get a great, we get, oh, we get that great line. We get that great line. Oh, no, we, well, that, that happens later. Sorry. So they're, they're all happy, right? Because not Gandalf magic totally worked. And now it's like the Shire. Now it's like the fucking shire thankfully it doesn't very last very long but it's still like the fucking shire and i can just hear i can hear the warner brothers intellectual property lawyers right now going all right if you have something that even looks like the shire for longer than say seven minutes an episode we're suing your ass uh so, and they're like, wow, maybe we should have waited a minute and not set not Gandalf off on his own. And now we have all these apples and everything is fine and everything's going to be fine, except it's not because later that night, they, uh, the, she's looking for snails. She said, I'm looking for snails. And, uh, she sees a big footprint, uh, big female Sam there. And she takes off, and that's when we get chicka chicka, chicka chicka, slim lady. My name is, my name is, my name is chicka chicka, slim lady. Dude's got a nice rack, though. Um, okay, so this is an all female order of Maiar. I don't know. Would you put it past Amazon to have female wizards? I would not. As a matter of fact, I would expect it. And if I didn't get it, I'd almost be disappointed. Because that's a woke box to check. It's like, Wayne Amar, female representation and token. And I'm not going to bother reading to see that there is female representation and token because I need to re I need to have it reflect the world that we actually live in. Not the world that you all live in, the world I live in in LA.
Yeah, liquid. That's what that's it's Birdie Sisson. I did have to check if that was like transgender, but no, that's that uh, that's a she her. That's her that's well that was her pronouns. It's completely up to you. So these mighty female warriors who haven't said a word, don't know who they are. Spoilers. We don't know who they are by the end of this episode either are following the Harfoots for reasons. I'm guessing. Oh, no, I can't guess because I already know. I'm not going to be coy. They are going after not Gandalf because they think he's Sauron. But, I mean, one dick move deserves another, and they definitely pull a dick move on the Harfoots. Can't say they didn't have it coming. They're kind of a bunch of assholes. Okay? So, um, female Sam and female Frodo try to get their attention. And they go, they just start looking at things. They don't talk to each other. Um, and then uh, Hobo Baggins puts a, tr uh, a torch in one of their faces, and they put the torch out. Is this where they? No. Uh, that's where um, female uh, Frodo said, and I know her name's Nori, but she's female Frodo. Um, she says, they went that way, and then they, then they disappeared, and then they reappeared. They got to be Maya. Uh, and then they do this. Wait, where's... So there's the torch. Gets thrown in, and like she's... He, she, he, she, he, she, she, he. Slowly puts it out. And then you saw in the trailer, she, she feminine, uh, they... Uh, blow the sparks and they blow up their entire village. <laughs> I started laughing. I'm like, ah, ha, ha. you deserve it, you little shits. So they just burned and then they left. Then they just fucked right off. Don't know a thing about them. Look at this sacrilege shit on the left-hand side right there. Read Fellowship of the Ring. Look at that cover. Look at that cover. Look at that cover. Don't buy that cover. There are hundreds of different versions you can get. You can get, if you just want a paperback version, you can get it for a couple bucks on eBay. You can go to your local used bookstore. That's what I would prefer. Or go on eBay, like help a mom and pop out. They'll have some copies of Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit for you and the Silmarillion and maybe even, you know, uh, some of the history of middle earth, you know, <sighs> but do not buy it from these fucktards. Okay. So we need, you know what? It's been a while since we repurposed anything from the fellowship of the ring. So we're at the Numenorian camp. That is a Sildur's horse barrack that Elendil is talking to and trying to calm down and telling it to take off. So it's kind of like, you've been a good horse, Bill. Take off. Uh, but the difference is Barrick, the horse, won't leave. But then he eventually does leave. And we all know he's going to find a Sildur. who they just left. By the way, th there's so much... Oh, my God. I think I've gone over a lot of stupid, right? I mean, have you have you guys maxed out on stupid yet? I'm sorry. There's still a page to go. Kicked out. All female order. My R. Alindo. Uh, Guy Ladriel returns. So he's sad. His son's dead. I mean, wow. They're totally going to kill a Sildur. 
This is so fucking dumb. And the fact that they ma- they managed to drag it out till next episode is ridiculous. No, no human being thinks Asildur is dead. It's just forced drama so we can make Alindil cry while all the stoic women save everybody. While Alindil cries. Alindil the tall. Valendil. He's he's still alive too. So God, we're still talking to the effing horse. Then the horse takes off. Uh, then he's like, I mean, honestly, I agree. That I'm gonna agree with a Lindell here. I absolutely think he should have left her in the sea where he found her, where she could just drown. I, I'm right there with you, brother. There's the big Numenorian camp. There's their fortified camp. Uh, Guy Ladriel. I posted this picture on Twitter. This woman was hit by a pyroclastic flow. She's still got all her hair. It's Hey, she's got her forehead's a little dirty. Her forehead's a little dirty, and they, they removed her blush. All five foot, by the way, five foot three, Morphid Clark. She is a hobbit. Uh, Man, they're still looking at dead bodies and wondering. We are 51 minutes into the motherfucking episode, and we're still like, who's dead? Who's live? Where's Bronwyn? Where's Don Lemonless? What about second breakfast? So he goes into the tent and he sees a bunch of injured people. Guy lost his leg. Girls burned. And we're like, fuck, just hurry up and have Bronwyn come up from behind him. Oh, by the way, I want to predict this now because it doesn't happen in this episode. A Sildur will return on his horse just like Aragorn did. Just like Aragorn did in the two towers. Like Beric will find him and nudge his hand and then get him on. And then a Sildur will be hanging out like Aragorn was. It'll be the same fucking thing. I promise you that's how it's going to happen. I don't know that how it's going to happen, but I'm guessing. So, yeah. Totally waiting for, for Bronwyn. So he's going up to a bed that's that's got a brunette woman who's dead and, and her blankets over her face. And just as he's about to grab for it, she goes, Theo? Theo? I was like, Fifty-two minutes and forty-three seconds into the penultimate episode of a series that costs sixty million dollars an episode, nothing has happened. They created a geo. They created a location. It's like Marvel giving us the origin of Latveria, but not of the country of the land. You don't need to explain a volcano. You don't need to explain an ore. <sighs> but you do when you've got nothing and no talent. There she is. Theo! Oh, my God. Not a scratch. She was hit by a pyroclastic flow, too. And, and the big difference is when we see Adar later... Like, they look like they got hit by a pyroclastic flow. <laughs> At least some ash. But not a scratch! Um, I wonder if they kept her injury on. Hang on. Because remember, she got, she, got, she got shot in the shoulder. Let's see how their continuity is. Oh, they're covering the shoulder. Oh, okay, she's got the strap on. At least they got that. Thank God somebody's doing their job on this show. Oh, Theo, I totally... Wasn't dead. 
so glad you're alive. These two original characters that have nothing to do with the lore. By the way, I know you're asking because you're just dying to know where's Sauron. Sorry, Halbrand. Almost there. Uh, and then Adar. Not Adar, sorry. And he gives a big hug to his dad, Don Lemonless, his absentee father. Then Guy Ladriel comes in, looking like a just a see you next Tuesday. Goes, where's the queen regent? And look at her. She's little next to next to Bronwyn. She's tiny. And she's all looking all hard. So she finds the queen regent who again is going to have a blindfold blindfold over her eyes so people won't find out she can't see. I didn't say she had a strap on, but I mean, like, what do you think? Okay, chat. I saw you. I see you in there. I see you in there. Um, so Queen Regent Muriel is very stoic. And Alindiel wants to bail. He's like, F this elf. I want to bail. Uh, ships depart within an hour. Uh, they're So they are leaving. They are fucking off and and then they're going to leave a garrison behind to search for their missing as they fuck off with all the provisions so they went over and fought got their asses whooped tended their wounded and they're going to leave all the wounded and they're taking provision how could if they're going back to sea they're taking their provisions. What, are they going to leave one ship behind? They're leaving a garrison behind. But the fact that they're just fucking off and leaving right now is it's like these writers are stupid. So he's mad. He wants to go because Muriel has decided that, no, we're going to come back with more Numenorians. We're going to kick some ass. We're going to, they don't know who they fucked with. And then... Bronwyn says, oh, we're going to go settle in a Numenorean call, uh, uh, I guess, a, a, an abandoned Numenorean colony that I'm guessing was there the whole time and they could have escaped to the whole time. I mean, why go to an abandoned Numenorean colony when you can stay in that squalid little thatched hut shithole? <laughs> So dumb. And like, this is supposed to be big and epic and it just doesn't feel that way because it feels like we're dealing with a cast of like, it feels like it was shot during COVID like a cast of 20 people. So he's looking mad. He should be, he should be mad that he's in this show. I'd be pissed. I was in the show too, dude. Cause it looks like you got some chops. That armor looks like shit though. And Bronwyn is there for some reason. Now, why is Bronwyn there with all the leaders? When they have a king? I don't know. And Galadriel, who's isn't even in with the elves, said the elves will be with you. What, you and Don Lemonless? Because you got kicked out by regional manager Gilgalad. I'm sure he'll take you right back because you're awesome. You are not in Numenor. We don't kneel in Numenor. Our ships are waiting, my queen. Where's the part where he's crying? The elves will be ready. And yeah, so I posted a picture on... Wait, hang on. It's it's bad. So yeah, he's sad for his son, but this is so forced and stupid. And we have the two stoic women, and of course we have Elendil fucking bawling his eyes out. And it says sniffles. Oh my God. Thank God. There's only one more episode. 
Oh, I thought I did damage to my brain on drugs back in the 80s. This really equals that. <sighs> Sniffles, that's his nickname. <laughs> It's so fucking cringe. Oh my God. It's cringe. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, and you notice they are completely out of the blast radius here, right? It is just gorgeous. There isn't a speck of ash anywhere. Oh, God. So we're back, excuse me, with the Harfoots, who are picking up after the warrior nun bitches, for some reason, just burnt their village down. The karma police. I don't know what the hell they are. Um, What's her name? Dilly. Dilly Brandyfoot. That's her name. So he gives this big pep talk speech. And I'm sure you guys remember this line. He keeps telling them, it'll, it'll be all right. There's one thing we do better than any creature in Middle Earth. Leave a motherfucker behind. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, stay true to each other, except when we leave a motherfucker behind. With... No matter uh, how the path winds or how steep it gets, we face it really dirty with our hearts bigger than our feet. Done. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Uh, what, what were the nuns for? What were the possibly my what were, what was the dude with the nice rack for? What was his purpose other than having a pretty nice rack for a dude? What was his purpose? As would sh certainly appreciate it. <laughs> I'm getting delirious now. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so what their big fucking plan is, because Harfoots, there's, there's no way they could be descendants of hobbits because they're too retarded uh they decide to go after not gandalf the guy they sent away to warn him that these three myar warriors slim shady feminine nuns dudes with nice racks are after him and they're already after him they're like way ahead of him i don't know why they would leave there's still plenty of fruit around but they're gonna go all of a sudden they're like okay we're with you Nori Brandyfoot. And they go off and we get that scene from the trailer where one of them looks like she's having a hard time uh, walking with her big. Uh... Yeah, this one. Why is she walking like that? I don't know. I don't know, but, uh, man, lickety split blind woman on a ship and she's leaving. Now, I don't know if a Lindiel is on the ship with her. They don't really tell us. It looks like he might be. And then Don Lemonless is with Guy Ladriel. And he says, uh, do you think she'll come back? No, says Galadriel. I know she will come back. Do, or do you believe she'll keep her promise? No. I'm certain of it. Fuck off. Uh, there's Bronwyn. And after all this, she's like, Oh, what's up with your king? Where's Halbrand? That dude I totally wanted to like make out with last episode. Let's just bring him up. 
one hour and 30 seconds into the episode, they bring him up. This is like, this is quintessential mystery box. This is it. What I just brought you through was a mystery box episode. This is why it's the worst form of storytelling. And it was not invented, but perfected by the trash creators at Bad Reboot, who are largely not getting jobs anymore. That's why it's very surprising that these fucking morons got jobs. But, you know, this is why I'm so down on Jar Jar Abrams repurposing Batman the Animated Series. I know there's a lot of Batman the Animated Series fans out there who just think it'll be great because uh, Bruce Tim is involved, but Paul Dini is not. That's very important. And thankfully, it got canceled. And they're shopping it around. Hopefully, nobody picks it up because it'll just be a woke Batman the Animated Series. The guy is shit. Everything he touches is shit. Don't get excited. Don't get excited about Constantine and Keanu Reeves coming back because he's involved. Even worse, it has Star Trek Picard writers on it. Uh, Bronwyn. She's all, you haven't heard about Halbrand? And his wound is festering. Guess what she says? It needs elvish medicine. So Halbrand is like totally wounded. I thought you have died. Better for me, I had done. Southlanders found him on the road like this yesterday. The wound soured overnight. So he needs elvish medicine. So this wound that he's sour is souring. Sauron's wound is souring. Um, and then he gets up and walks and gets on a fucking horse. Oh my God, they even bring up the raft. It seems fate has more in store for us than one more raft. To call back to that, these writers are really proud of themselves, aren't they? Their mockery of Tolkien. So uh, they say, uh, they ba they basically say the South will rise again. <laughs> Strength to the king. Strength to the king. They And then, wasn't he just on his deathbed? Uh, Theo gives back the sword she doesn't want it back he's obviously an elf they've covered his hair this whole time oh my god she almost smiled um they say the south will rise again yay uh uh durin says i failed elron i failed everybody and then disa it takes disa to pick him up and she says you are the king well by the way he got stripped of uh, being a prince. But she's like, nope, you're still going to take over and I'm going to rule with you. And we're going to dig for that uh, Mithril because your father is short-sighted and stupid. He grows too old and suspicious. His mind is too feeble. His eyes too dim to see. She's all, it's our kingdom. This Mithril belongs to us. And we are going to dig. That's great. And then they toss the leaf. Then he takes that leaf that got cured for the cancer and tosses it. And it magically falls down the crack that they supposedly just sealed up earlier in the episode. And. Wait. Ba -ba -da -ba! Remember the Balrog from Fellowship of the Rings? Remember Lord of the Rings? Remember Peter Jackson? This show sucks. This show sucks. He's supposed to be hibernating, by the way. So if he's awake, he would be tearing this place up already. So meanwhile, back in the Southlands, so they're all going, Adar, Adar, Adar. And he's like, we have a homeland now. What are you going to call it? And this is, this is cringe. Prepare yourselves. 
your your butt's gonna pucker on this one. Your booty is gonna pucker. Even the ladies, sorry, ladies. Um, Adar, Adar, what are you gonna call this land? Watch this. Oh, that is so bad. Oh. This got by, this made it by hundreds of people. Hundreds of people like signed off on this and said this was a good idea. Your big reveal in the in the fucking penultimate episode of a $60 million series is we named a land Mordor that we knew was Mordor all along. Uh, by the way, it wasn't named by a fucking elf, like a dark elf. Sauron should have already been here. Oh. Yeah, that is, is cringy. That is it. I think we got some scenes or some shit. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Let's see if I can find... um. Oh, yeah, she's like, I am Muriel. And he just, the elves will be ready. No, no, no. I'm trying to find a good thing to pause on. Captain. And she doesn't know where he is, and he's bawling. I got I to gotta stop it at Sniffles. There we go. That's good. That's a good place to stop it. At Sniffles. Jesus. Just a moment. Good God. <laughs> Jesus. That's terrible. Only one more to go, folks. Only one more to go. So Disa gives Dern a pep talk. Uh, to recap, um, everybody survived except for the white guy friend of Asildur. Everybody thinks Asildur's dead. He's obviously not going to die, but it's a big mystery that the guy who cuts the ring from Sauron's hand is going to live or die. Oh, and there's the big mystery of who's Sauron when we know it's all, it's, it's Halbrand. <coughs> Excuse me. I need some water. All right, let's get to you. Uh, <laughs> Perry says someone said sniffing dill. <laughs> in the chat and i fucking lost it so perry saw that so whoever said sniffing dill well played well played perry perry's out there watching what's up perry chan what's up perry how you doing my god i gotta get up early for that video tomorrow um my kid's back in school again Whew, gotta get used to that it's been two years since we've been waking up at 6 30 in the morning Oh, uh, where was I? That's where I was. I was going to get to you. Yeah, it was very strange. Uh, for about 20 minutes, I lost internet, and I thought I was going to have to call this thing off. Glad it uh, it worked itself out. And thanks for, for being here. Oh, wow, this is just a... <laughs> okay, 
I'm going to admit I was wrong about something. I, I do it all the time. I'm wrong. Listen, ask my wife. I'm wrong about 50 things a day. But I was wrong about this show. Something very specific about this show. I didn't think it would be this bad. I didn't think it would be this bad. I knew the spoilers, and I still didn't think it would be this bad. So the, the show has played out almost exactly, and I mean tonally, like somebody reading the spoilers to me. That's how the show has played out. Somebody going, this and this happens in this episode. And then, and then, and then. Good Lord. All right. We're going to get to you now. We're going to get to you now. All right. We'll start at the beginning. Let's go way down here. Okay. Five picoseconds for five Canadian pesos. Disa being Sauron makes a lot more sense than Halbrand after this episode. She has Sith eyes. Also, the dwarves continue to be the only thing watchable. Uh, after this episode, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say, like, visually, it's fine. But their story is just, are we going to dig? No. I don't want you to dig, but we have to dig. I shouldn't dig, but I need you to dig, but I can't dig. I'll ask my dad to dig. He said we shouldn't dig, but let's dig, but I don't want to dig, but we better dig. Hey, Gary, raging alcoholic here. Any advice for people trying to kick the habit? Uh, Joseph Botcher for $10. Uh, alcohol is very, very tough because it's so readily available. Um, my advice is if you're asking, that means you're ready, but you have to be ready. You have to be ready. Um, rarely is somebody ready who hasn't come very close to hitting bottom. I hope you can avoid that. Go to a meeting. Don't drink when you go there. Try being sober for, just try not drinking for a day and go to a meeting. And it's, uh, it, it, it will not be easy at first, but I can promise you, if you stick with the program, life will get a thousand times better over time. A thousand times better. It won't hurt to wake up in the morning. It won't hurt to go to bed at night. You won't feel sick all the time. You won't feel tired all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome not having to, not being imprisoned by, by that anymore. One day at a time. But uh, I wish you all the best. God bless. Joseph. Uh, Sir Ruin of House Roundhead for $9.99. I have not watched this episode yet. Uh, don't. <laughs> Save yourself an hour and 10 minutes. But if the Eminem-looking character ends up being Sauron, then he should call himself Slim, Sa Slim Sauron and have a rap battle against Galadriel. Uh, that would probably be more entertaining than anything that would happen in this so show. Fine, sir but it's not Sauron. I think it might actually be something worse. A wizard. Uh, Janan Classen for 10 Canadian pesos. Pronounced like Canaan. Okay, Canaan. Uh, with a J. I got close then, right? Uh, this is Mordor country. Let's make Mordor great again. Exactly. A place where evil can not only go, but thrive. Paul Pereri. For four ninety nine, the show in a nutshell: Harad activist lives through arrows and volcanoes, but Celeborn is dead to begin with. Yep, yep. The cannabis and CBD dispensary chick uh, is not only a general; she she survives a pyroclastic flow. Uh, Hail Gary! How much money do you think Hollywood will have to lose to change course? Um, it's. I had to read, okay, I, it has to be a lot. But I was thinking like losses in something they've already put money into, but they've they've recovered from things like that before. No, their revenue streams have to be disrupted. And they kind of did it to themselves by rushing into streaming. And they've disrupted a lot of re revenue streams. So the change is happening. Whether they live through it or not, not really sure. 
you know, uh, our good friend Iron Fist talk, uh, Iron Fist, uh, Razor Fist talks about the Iron Age. And I think as far as the Iron Age of creativity, uh, I like that term for just everything going on. I think we're in a parad- uh, a creative paradigm shift. I wouldn't call it a renaissance yet, but it could be. Um, we, I, it, It's going to be years before we can f- decide what it really meant. Um, but the, the I, I'm going to use their language. We are disrupting their power structures. So he was talking about somebody making the new newsarama, new this. Well, you know, these live streams we do that you guys do, uh, you're the new collider. You're the new AMC movie talk. You're it. You know, you're the new entertainment tonight. That's what you are. So even if you can't like create a comic book or or a movie or anything, that's how you're doing it. You're being the alternative press to the alternative press. Uh, Razor Fist style lap time victory asked Nerd Cookie, speaking of our good friend Razor Fist, who will be on Friday Night Tights on the 21st, by the way. Uh, yeah, I would say it's that time, but Nerd Cookies, let's just wait until we find out. Like when we get the confirmation in the show next week that Hal Brand is Sauron, then I'll do a, then as and I together can do a fuck you, we were right. <laughs> Somebody else can too. You know who you are out there. Ultimately, you were the one who was right. Okay. Uh, I didn't, by the way, never doubted you for a minute. Everything sounded right in line with this shit. It's just watching it happen before us is something else. Oh, nerd cookies, man. Imagine if they approach this show. I'm going to bring up, I'm going to make you so happy at nerd cookies if you're still out there. Um, I, if they approached it with the reverence, that Warner Brothers approached Dune. Imagine how good this show could have been. Hmm. Huh? You know, I don't think Dune was the greatest movie ever made. Nerd Cookies loved it, and that's great. But a lot of people loved it. And a lot of the Frank Herbert fans loved it because they, it showed reverence to the author and the source material. And that's, you know, kind of what we were asking here. Uh, but uh, you are patently evil if you want people to respect the lore. Remember, it's a right-wing dog whistle. Guardian Fortress, thank you for the super sticker for two ninety nine. dollars Pag Lick... No, oh, I read that one already. That's good, because your name is hard to pronounce. Sorry. Uh, Dermy Wormy for $5. The show is so stupid that it doesn't realize it sets Disa up to be... The reason Durin Bane will awaken, LOL. Yes. Yeah, I mean, essentially, yes. They are setting up Disa, the, the, the dwarf of color, to be the reason the Balrog comes up. Durin's Bane! Uh, I'm sorry. I can't. Here, let's see if I can try. I can try. There's certain things I can't see. Because the studio is still lame. The studio is just still lame. There we go. Aburu, uh, Slim Wizard, some call him Tim for $5. Thank you very much. On the donation side, oh, we got a lot here. Uh, Fleet Admiral Rindek. For five dollars says greetings. Thank you for your reviews. My wife was recently criticized by her brother for her negative review of Rings of Power. Uh, oh, disown his ass. Uh, or they should just fight. Um, what would you say is a, what would you say is a great criticism to offer normies who think that Rings of Power's changes in the lore are par with PJ's in the Lord of the Rings? They have no idea what they're talking about. They have absolutely no idea what we're talking about. We're not talking about replacing. Arwen with Glorfindel, okay? Because they wanted to to put Arwen in. It actually makes sense for the film, right? Um, I I have no problem with them leaving out Tom Bombadil. That would that would have completely destroyed the structure of the film. Um, would I like to see an adaptation with all those things in it someday? Sure, uh, but I could live without it, honestly. I could live without it. Uh, what I would say to them is, you know, you don't want to be a dick. 
You just go, no, the, this isn't like replacing a character with another character or leaving out a scene. We are stretching characters across millennia, millennia who have never met. We are doing things out of order. And Tolkien was very specific with his, with his characters, with his progression. There's a reason one thing came before another and there's no, it's just willy nilly. It's like they put, uh, you know, names of, of characters and lands and situations in a pot, shook it all up and just fucking randomly grabbed it out, you know, pulled it out like a lotto. So the argument is don't be such a fucking normie. Read a book. <laughs> Matthew Hammond. What does uh, this, when does this horror show end for $5 next week? My brother next week, one week from today, it's over. You know, I'll do another video after that. And then we'll see if they, they shut up. If they cope, we'll see what happens afterwards. Usually these things go on another couple weeks afterwards, then hopefully by February, April, it will be a distant memory. Uh, Elendil cries like a saggy cunt. <laughs> Fits right into this bitch made, his bitch made <laughs> bitch tit armor. <laughs> Says gay man. <laughs> I can't even say your name, dude. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit for five dollars that was awesome <laughs> i love stream labs oh uh, you can say whatever the hell you want uh michael ermish for five dollars <laughs> oh god it's it's really like sophomoric maybe even junior hayek but it cracked me up uh thanks for reviewing the this shit so we don't have to. Greetings from Germany. Ah, greetings, Germany. Hope all is well over there. Hey, I got to your, go to your country for the first time in 2017. I stayed in an airport. I wish to see it. Uh, hey, uh, how can anyone honestly enjoy Rings of Power? This shit is somehow called television. The Foxy Man for $1.92. I think it goes a long way to explaining 81 million votes uh, done for $5. I think Halbrand could be the witch King, the head wraith who stabs Frodo. Nope. He is Sauron. He is Sauron. If I hadn't known that, that might be a possibility, but um, remember the rings aren't even forged yet and they won't be for a long time. And then you have to, and then like it's the elven rings forged first and then there's uh dwarven rings then there's the rings for men then there's the one ring and then you know the rings uh on the uh the men have to corrupt them it takes a lifetime to corrupt them now if they're numenorians it takes hundreds of years and uh and i'm, I'm sure one of the one or two of the nazgul will be female i'm, I'm sure of it thank you how y'all doing How you all doing? Uh, Aaron pipes for $10. Shouldn't the heirs be worried about real damage to the value of the Tolkien IP? They should, Aaron, but they obviously weren't because they got that sweet, sweet Amazon cash. And the one thing, if you learn from, if you read, if you read fantasy, or if you're a student of history, what one father treasures, a son may not, and a grandson ain't going to give a fuck. And the same goes for granddaughters and daughters. Uh, da, 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 da. God bless you for defending the lore and the legacy of the Lord of the Rings fandom. Hail, Nerdrotic and Friday Night Tights. Earl Starbuck for five dollars. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna dive into this tomorrow. Excuse, excuse me. I sound like I've been drinking uh, water, folks. Water uh, with Shadversity and Disparu. Uh, Chrissy's gonna join us again. I made her watch it. 
We're going to talk about She-Hulk, too, and Daredevil coming back because, oh, my God, these shows running together is like, I'm sure that's helping House of the Dragon. I'm just going to say it. Matt L., the sea is always right, full of terrors, which I read already. Uh, the Camberwell carrot for five Australian dollars. G'day. The bold and the beautiful progresses faster than the rings of power. Soap operas progress faster than the rings of power. And, yes, I will freely admit that when I was in high school, I would get just stoned out of my mind and watch like Santa Barbara as the world turns the bold and the beautiful. Cause that was like a half an hour soap opera. And like, I'd be, I'd be with my, my little grandma, my little G ma who was smoking like lucky strikes with no filter lived to be 95 years old. Fucking great lady, by the way. So stoned me and my grandma are watching Santa Barbara, totally into it talking about the gossip and everything. It was great. I miss my G-Ma. Uh, Jacob Harden for $4.99. Theo loves grabbing other people's sword hilts. Ooh, he does. Mm -hmm. Tony A for $10 Australian dollars. Do you think Guy Ladriel's brother would have explained why Palpatine ships couldn't find up? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe that's what, that's what his punchline was. Uh, Guy Ladriel has two more brothers that were killed by Morgoth as well. But we're just going to focus on Finrod and then not mention our husband till the seventh episode. You like my shirt? My wife got this for me. Where was it? All right. Back to you. Uh, Xenomorph for $10. I long for the embrace of the grave. <laughs> uh, checking in at bar closing. Can't wait to watch this while I eat Whataburger while sobering up hail. The Argonauts for $10. Damn you for eating a Whataburger when I can't eat right now. I am fasting. And it's, I'm just, I'm at the bitter point where I can have almonds and water and rice cakes. It's great. Getting old is great. Um, Melkor did nothing wrong, says Wari, for 10 Australian dollars. Shouldn't the heirs, oh, I read that one. Uh, Miriel, Miracle. She, uh, oh yeah, Mir Mira Luca, Mira Luca. She uses the force. Yes, she probably will. She'll probably still battle. She'll be like the 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 blind warrior, like Daredevil. Galadriel is pregnant with Celebrian. Kel uh, uh, then Celeborn comes back resurrected, but Halbrand's still around, and we have a uh, a Mari episode. Oh. No, but I think um, the whole thing about Guy Ladriel getting humbled is her falling for Hal Brand, and that's still intersectionalism. It's it's uh, the 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 intersectionalist playbook basically is if it's going to be a cis hetero man, you know, like an actual masculine man, um, they are either duplicitous evil or incompetent it's one of those three things straight white males are either duplicitous evil or incompetent or they die uh you deserve a little shit best quote of the day from uh my book bravo gary bravo <laughs> You deserve it, you little shit. Oh, you deserve it. Yeah, when I was talking about the Harfoots. Yes, they deserved for their little fucking town to get burned. Uh, oh, thank God. I thought I missed, missed you tonight. You didn't. Heretic Hunter, you didn't. RV comps for five British pounds. Dwarves delved uh, too uh, leafly, too deep. I'll, uh, laugh my ass off. Everything is so lame. Mount Doom created because of a dumb switcheroo. Mordor named via a... <laughs> A font change. Crap. I mean, like, think about that. 
Mordor was named in a font change at the end of the episode. I will show it to you again before we go. It is unbelievable. Matthew N for 10 Australian dollars. Even the guy who was good enough for Gladriel gets made out to be an incompetent goofball who can't put his own armor on properly. God have mercy on us all. I agree. After wit for 10 Austra- US dollars. I bet the showrunners are in so many meetings bashed and blame for this mess while they beg for everyone to just wait for the Balrog episode because the fans will definitely come back for that. Yeah. I was almost like in the point of, I was almost at the point of having sympathy for them. Like they were just stooges, uh, but they're not just stooges. They are not just stooges. They specifically say in the article that one of them has the gift of bullshit. Like he's an absolute bullshit artist. They called him the Saul Goodman of middle earth, which might be a compliment in Hollywood. But it's you're really good at convincing dumb people to give you money. That's it. You're not good at writing. You're you, that's what Jar Jar Abrams is good at convincing dumb people to give him money. He has no talent. Uh, I don't know why people throw money at him all the time. Oh, I do. Steven Spielberg anointed him. Yo, Gary, what's up with last week when Amazon shut you down for a violation? Oh, I was playing too much of the show. I mean, that's on me. You can only do it for. I pushed it. You can like, you can like let something go for a few seconds, but you can't let it go for like 20 seconds. or they'll shut you down. But YouTube, at least when you're live, like brings you back. So if you just hang out and come back, it sucks. I lost like, we lost like 5,000 people like almost immediately, but that's cool. You guys watched it later. And I really appreciate that. Uh, Alex Ritter for $5. Tolkien would be up at arms when with the dwarven king said that uh the gods tolkien prolific christian made in a monotheistic world well he did i i paraphrased what he said to be fair alex he he said there are people wiser than me who have a grander design but he is still alluded to the gods and not the god the god the one Guy Ladriel and Theo under the tree was a rip off from the hobbits hiding in the Nazgul and fellowship. Disgusting. Thank you. Alpha three Viking for pointing that out. That was another repurposed event. Yes. There's, there's so much re so they're basically it's the force awakens folks. It's the force awakens. That's what they did with the rings of power. Season one, they TFA it. Rizvo Bronwyn's bags are <laughs> the only thing in this show that have go- that's going for it. How about the great CGI when Durin breaks the wall? I know it's so bad. When he had better CGI in 2001, they can't even do a little th- the little things right and it hurts. Strong whamman says Wari for 10 Australian dollars. Gorbs, hey Gary, thanks for reviewing the show. They have given me uh, a far better idea of what episodes I can leave out entirely on a pet project to recut the show to try to make it watchable. I You're probably going to cut it down to about an hour. John Q. Ghost, thank you for the $10 super sticker. Lady Graymaster, what is up for $10? The scene makes no sense. They were literally feet uh, from other survivors, but took off. I know, Bronwyn took a, like didn't even bother looking for a kid. Like, she left the town. She she abandoned her son uh, as a father. If I was in a if I survived a pyroclastic flow and my son was around there, I wouldn't leave until every grain of sand was picked up. Okay, I wouldn't leave. I'd starve to death looking for him. I burned to death looking for him. A lady great master, you would do that for any of your kids. Uh, this is not 60 million an episode show. Uh, her look is not one of a lost love being remembered. It's boredom. I totally agree. Uh, the bean, oh, the Bene Gesserit white witches are uh coming to mate with uh Django Adarfet. <laughs> Says man bites tech for five dollars. Yep. And that's basically what they are. Just another all-female order because 
you know, the sh- Tolkien just needed more female energy. Sentinel Rex for ten dollars. Are we supposed to root for the elves? <laughs> Not in this show. They're causing the issues. Are they writing the orcs as misunderstood heroes? Is the message orc? Uh, is the message orcs men and elves aren't so different? Yeah, basically. Do the writers even know? No, they don't. I bet you they make Galadriel's sword become Narsil. Or um, uh, it could be a sword that comes up later. Bearded. Uh, Bam Blama for $19.99. If, they, if it weren't for my signed copies of ISOM number one, I would have put a bullet through my TV. This show is awful. Yes. Oh, I'm getting mine tomorrow. I'm getting mine tomorrow. Can't wait. Oh my God, you guys are crazy tonight. You guys are crazy tonight. Uh, Raging Rhino for two Australian dollars. You're a legend, Gary. And so is the chat. The chat is a legend, and so are you, Raging Rhino. Thank you. Uh, Richard Thunder for five Australian dollars. No second season. It's already started. I can't believe it. Uh, But they rushed it. They rushed it. Uh, the show shall not pass, says zero, the alpha, zero, or zeroth alpha, sorry. Uh, horrible writing, horrible acting, says Richard Thunder for uh, two Australian dollars. Uh, Knight of or- of Orange for five dollars. Damn, rings of power, so bad it almost made She-Hulk look good in comparison this week. Almost, yeah, almost. Uh, Mo Sin Ahmed, thank you for that, uh, for 25 AEDs. I don't know what there are, so I'm going to say Martian pesos. So, Mosin Ahmed, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Uh, Hatet Ung for five. I, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. 500 yen. Hail from Japan, Gary. Keep up the good fight for Tolkien and good old traditional values. You too. Herukami for five British pounds. Toxic Nazgul, you're sure they are going to be female? Uh, I don't know. They could be just misogynist. And Mosin Ahmed for 10 more Martian pesos. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good to see you, my friend. Hope you're doing well over there, wherever you are. Mr. Gently Benevolent for five Australian dollars. Damn you, Gary. You're just, uh, you just made me realize these idiots are going to invent and ruin the Blue Wizard story at some point, aren't they? Yep, they might be doing it right now as we speak. Three Beer Thunder for $9.99. I've seen, I've seen San Bernardino crack heads crackheads have better conversations with themselves than the dialogue in this by the way in and out is better than whataburger i i agree i don't hate whataburger there's no hate for whataburger but in and out is better and i've got both i've got both here um you know what i don't got california it's wonderful Andrew Matthews for five British pounds. Mithril was discovered in the first age and dug through the second age. Only 2,000 years into the third age did the Balrog appear. Thank you, Andrew. You are correct, sir. You are correct. Uh, Wari for 10 Australian dollars. Here's another $10 dollar uh, dues to get yourself a Whataburger while I sit here and enjoy a few Coronas watching your content slay this this shit show. Oh, you're welcome. And enjoy the coronas. Enjoy the coronas. Uh Quinn Lai for 10 Australian dollars. And thank you, Wari. Uh, love your channel and your analysis videos and reviews. Thank you. Uh, I I thank you. Quarter Black thanks you. Perry Chan, who's in the chat, thanks you. X-ray girl is probably asleep. X-ray girl. Probably sleepy, sleepy pie. She got a big day tomorrow, Friday night tights. Today, sorry, today. A shadow Knight for five dollars. Mount Doomsy, <laughs> Doomsy Plus was created when She Hulk Deladriel let loose her tempest on Daredevil's boo- boozy. <laughs> Holy shit! You guys are maniacs today. Uh, two white dudes obsessed with race, colonialism one on one. Says Richard Thunder for two dollars. Yeah. 
All hail Waldrig, the dirty <laughs> creator of Mount Doom, says Rush Pabs for four ninety nine. Hell yeah! I feel like the elf, uh, the evil elf guy, should be called a Darham Lincoln. <laughs> He just wants to free the orcs and is actually a pretty decent guy. Yep. Honestly, I'm on his side right now. I, I read my copy of ISOM again instead of watching this crap. Uh Tim Dog, 68 for $5. That was a smart move. Dave Dahl. This show actually tests my sobriety. It's like pandemic of bad fantasy, the coof of the rings, or rings of discovery. It really is a lot like Star Trek Discovery. It reminds me a lot. Yeah. Uh, don't let it test your sobriety. Your sobriety is strong like mine. Hey, Gary, did you miss my chat? Uh, I hope not on a hitch. O for two Australian dollars, but I'll go back and look uh, Two. why I read that one after years when the dust has settled and we look back at this show soberly and objectively, it will still be bad. <laughs> You're right. It'll still be shit. Thank you, Michael Hansen, for 100 Swedish krona. Well said. Well said. Uh, the sea is always right. The tree is always white. The she is always right, says uh, Monsin Ahmed. For 25 Martian pesos. Thank you, my friend. Travis Adair, not Adar, Adair, for $5. Shouldn't we give the all-female order a lot of love for burning the the Harcraps village down. I think we should. I am their biggest fans. I cheered so hard for five seconds. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off. Things I learned from episode seven uh, from Bo and Debbie Mulder for ten dollars. Mithril heals black rot, leaves awakened Balrogs. Uh, pyroclastic flow doesn't always kill. Kelleborn was his name, <laughs> so Arwen won't be born. As of now, no. Adar says orc lives matter. They do. Knight of Orange for $5. Uh, Durham Bai for $10 says, Halbrand, Wraith King, Fallen Wizard, Sauron, boobs dark, <laughs> boobs dark finger equals mouth of Sauron. They are going to chase him, but he will run and be good. He will be good fallen angel wizard to help him, to help Celeborn. To help Celeborn. That was probably supposed to like rhyme to something. But I did it badly. Sorry. Ty Red for 14 Australian dollars. The promotional material was awful, but somehow the, the, the actual show is worse. You're right, Ty. This is the worst rollout in history. In in history. In history. Hang on. I gotta check and see if I uh I'm gonna look for it. Anna Hitch Zero. Okay. I'm looking. I'm a looking. I'm doing this the old-fashioned way without X-Ray Girl. I should make her stay up with me for the finale. I think I'm going to do that. For the finale, X-Ray Girl, you got to stay up. I don't care about your job. I don't care about your day job. What about me? What about my needs, X-Ray Girl? What about my needs? Uh, hey, uh, I read that one. All right. Oh, there's there is two. There is two. Let's get to the second one. Uh, for $30.99, $30.99, cents Australian, how Ring of Powers, Rings of Power should have been. Sildor is the protagonist, agreed. First season covers downfall of Numenor, finale being the destruction of Numenor. Subsequent seasons cover establishment of the kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor. Change my mind. No, I, I'm fine with that series. You can do three separate series. You could do one on the forging of the rings. You can do one of the fall of Numenor, and then you could do one of the war of the last Alliance. Why not? And you could have done, you could have done two of those seasons for a billion dollars. HBO just pulled this off for 200 million. What they're doing right now. Uh, Theo loves, oh, I read that one. I'm not evil. I'm just Sauron in the show. <laughs> Says the Gord King. Okay. I'm going to read a couple more and then I got to go. I take my kids to school in the morning. I'm tired. Um, member stream will be Monday morning. If you're a member, Monday morning, we're doing a member stream. Uh, da, 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 da. Three, three birth thunder for 1999. Don't do it, Gary. Get a double double. 
uh, for you and the missus on me. And you may have Texas and freedom, but I still have carne asada fries. Shut up. So we'll call it a win-win. Uh, I'll go home to get the, well, I'll go back when I visit my mom and I'll get those. I'll get those. I will get those. All right, folks. The rest will have to be on the square up. Just double checking stuff. All right. Um, schedule for today in about 13 hours. Friday Night Tights will start with Shad and Brooks from Shadiversity. And, of course, Disparu. And the whole gang will be there, and we'll be talking about the Rings of Power and She-Hulk and everything for your Friday evening's enjoyment. You never know who else might show up. You never know. Um, poor Nick Ricada was yeeted off of YouTube. I heard he was offered a pretty good deal at Rumble, and I'm I'm really glad to hear that, but I'd like to see him back on YouTube. Uh, even if he stays with his focus on Rumble, I think it's more important than ever that we try to stay on this platform um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm eventually going to move somewhere, uh, for an alternative, but I mean, honestly, I got to keep my focus here. I want to be in the belly of the beast. I think it's important. I think Nick thinks it's important too, but Nick's probably pretty pissed right now because, uh, he got fucked over. So, um, my deepest sympathies go to my friend, Nick Ricada. I hope he's doing okay. Hope his family's doing okay. I'm sure he's fine. He's a tough dude. Um, but uh, he's welcome on this channel any old time. He's got the keys to it if he needs it. So please show your love for Nick Ricada, who again got yeeted off of YouTube uh, over a mass flagging campaign uh, because there are some very disturbed people out there. As you know. As you know. Uh Liquor Snurf for $20 says, I'm never going to watch uh, this thing they call a show. Wait, how did Guy Ladriel live? This show makes no sense. Also, I joined late. Sorry if you mentioned I didn't see. You're still awesome. Keep shine, uh, keep shitting on Hollywood. I will, as long as they keep shitting on us. And thank you. Uh, Orden Royce for $10 says, Iron Crow Entertainment source book of for Gorgorod, uh, had a female Nazgul. Uh, she was seventh, uh, Terry, uh, she was seventh of the nine and the only female not considered canon, but the Amazon crew ever finds the copy, then the Valor protect, may the Valor protect us all. Yeah. That, that believe me, if, the, if it's, if it's even insinuated, you know, if, if there's a Mark next to a, he, that might be interpreted as a her, they're going to run with it. Trust me. Trust me. Velen Wolf for $5. I hear there's a deleted scene featuring Don Lemonless pinned down by an orc as he shouldn't. I can't breathe. <laughs> Extended edition, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Dune for $5. I think Halbrand could be the Witch King, the head Wraiths, uh, who stabs Frodo. Uh, again, I, I answered that one. Uh, it's Halbrand. I promise you it's Halbrand. I promise you it's Halbrand. All right, folks. We got one more. I, re I read that one. All right. So, so thank you. Thank you to the Modrotics, whoever's left. Uh, oh yeah, there's, there's Perry. Perry's here. Love you, Perry. Um, thanks to, uh, um, everyone who left a super chat and a donation. Uh, if I didn't read it tonight, it'll get read in a square up. That's going to be a combination of House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. Square up, and it's on Nerdrotic Live when uh, I'm finished recording it. I'll just record it. I don't do them live because uh, I want to make sure I get all the, the the previous ones read. I want to focus on that. So um, we'll be back for the finale. Uh, I have a this. I have this feeling. I I have no news on this. I have this feeling they'll release it a little early. Could be wrong. But don't be surprised if they, they need to energize their fan base because they're getting destroyed right now. And this thing will be a complete memory by the time Game of Thrones ends in three weeks or uh, House of the Dragon ends in three weeks. Um, just like every Disney Marvel show is. And remember what I said. I got this from very, 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 very good authority that this show 
had to be Stranger Things. It has to be on the charts for months. Stranger Things never leaves the charts. You know that, right? It just never leaves it. It's always on it. So this show needs to always be on the charts. It will drop out of the charts in a matter of a couple of weeks. That's my guess. It's already uh, evening out. Um, our good friend Ryan just made a video. If you, The one he dropped tonight, if you want to go take a look at it after this, he's got the new latest Nielsen's in it. And in those latest Nielsen's, um, it's still like a hair above House of the Dragon. But if you count all the cable viewers, House of the Dragon is destroying it. Absolutely destroying it. And by the way, it dropped to like fourth. Uh, Lord of the uh, the House of the or Rings of Power. This big global event that costs billions of dollars dropped to fucking fourth place and it's going to go lower. So you are winning. The reason they went on a full on assault yesterday was because you're winning. You were right. And they are just, they're coping as the kids say it's damage control. By the way, I've got a video coming out in, um, I'd say a few short hours, six, seven hours, uh, covering that article. Uh, and, uh, I hope you enjoy it. And then after that will be Friday night tights. And then Sunday night, I will be live with Mahler, Shad, uh, Jane, I think you're going to jump on the show too. Jane theory. We'll have Jane theory on if she's up. I just assume she'll show up. I'm that's kind of a arrogant. Sorry. <laughs> I know she's got day job, but hopefully Jane will show, uh, join us and we'll watch something good. So thanks again, everybody. Love you guys. Uh, unlike the showrunners who think you're patently evil, I think you're patently awesome. So have a good one.